All right, some more examples here with 8.3. We're dealing with E, but now I just want you to realize um, what to do um, with these. And basically, when we're combining and trying to simplify expressions, you do what you would always do, okay? Um, and what I'm trying to get at here is you combine it just as you would anything else. You combine them like you would x's. If I had an x squared times an x to the third, what do you do? You add the exponents, right? You add them on the top to get x to the fifth power. You do the same with e's. Nothing changes. So like I said, this is like saying 1. So 1 times 6 is 6. And you add the exponents, so it's e to the x plus 3x minus 1. So you get 6e to the 4x minus 1. That's all that is. You just add the exponents. Um, over here, once again, everything looks the same. The third root of 125 and the third root of e to the 12x. Well, the third root of 125 is 5. And this I can rewrite as e to the 12 e to the 12 x all to the one third and really that's like saying e to the 12 x over 3 and 12 divided by 3 is 4 so really that's 4 x so really it simplifies to the 5 out in front and an e to the 4 x is our answer for that one okay so when we're doing this um, I recommend just going across the top and going across the bottom and then see what we get from there. But first, take through any um, of those uh, parentheses to get rid of them. So really we have an e to the 4x. So that's really e to the 4x on top. So 5 times 1 is a 5 on top. And e to the negative 2x and e to the 4x, well you add the exponents, right? So when you add exponents of negative 2x and 4x, when you add them, you end up getting e to the 2x. So that's what's on top. That's a 1 and that's a 10, so 1 times 10 is 10. And you add the exponents, so that's like saying 4x and negative x, which is e to the 3x. So you can divide each of those by 5, so you get 1 over 2. And these, since it's division, you subtract the exponents. So 2x minus 3x is e to the negative x. Now, you can't have a negative exponent, so move that to the bottom. So really have 1 over 2e to the x is what we end up with for that problem. All right. Um, growth or decay. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. So before we realize whether it's growth or decay, this is what I want you to do. Grab out your graphing calculator again. Go to y equals and type it in just like this. Uh, 10.2 e caret sign with a parentheses, 0 0.04 x and parentheses, and see what you get. So we have 10.2, um, and remember e is second, um, ln will give you the e, 0 0.04 x and parentheses, and press graph, just look at the graph. Okay, does the graph look like it's going up? Because if the graph looks like it's going up, then it will be a growth. All right, does the graph look like it's going up? If the graph is going up, and by up I mean like this, it could be going really slow, but if it's going up, it's a growth. And in this case, it is. So we're going to come back and take a look at this, but this is growth when you graphed it. So let's take a look at this one now. Okay, go to y equals and graph this one. And when you do, it's 7, then an e with a uh, caret parentheses negative 2x and parentheses is what I want you to type in there. So 7 second ln gives you the e and it's negative 2x and parentheses and delete. So press graph and see what you get. So when we graph that one we end up getting something that looks like this. Okay, that's what we end up getting. This is an example of something decaying because it's starting high and going down. So here is this, this, the first one that we did, and we said that was growth. Here is the second one that we did, right? And we said that's decay. What do you notice that's different in these two that might help you realize what's going on? Well, what I realize is 
Look at the last one. This number right up here is positive. What's this number here? Negative. Hmm. Okay. So here's a little rule you can keep in mind. It's decay whenever it's negative there in the exponent, and it's growth whenever it's positive. So it's just something there for you to keep in mind. So in this problem, we'll graph it to double check our findings, but what do you think that should be? Beforehand, I'm guessing it's decay. Let's take a look. Go to y equals and graph it 13.7 e to the negative 0.04x. And we press graph. And when we're looking at it, sure enough, it might be a little wider, but it goes down like that, and it has decay. Um, the last little tidbit here of info to keep in mind, um, which, let me just double check to see how many problems there are. There's only two here. Um, this is continuously compounded. When you have an E, instead of using the other formulas, the key here is this line right here, continuously compounded. That's how you know you're going to use this formula. These are actually simpler to me. Um, it's telling you what P is already. P is 16,000. That's what you deposit in. E to the, it's telling you the rate is 0.12 for 12% after 11 years. That's all. And you know you use this formula because it says continuously compounded. So when you go to plug this stuff in, right, all you need to do is do 1600 um, second um, ln gives you that E sign, and 0.12 times 11, and you end up getting. 5989.47 is your answer. And in the next one, um, you deposit 82 into an account. It's e to the, it's 10% after times 10 years. And I know that I'm using this formula because it says continuously compounded. So I do 82,000. Uh, second LM gives me the e function, 0.1 times 10, and you end up getting 22,289.91 as your answer. So the last little thing here I want you to remember is we had this formula that we used and this formula, which we just learned. Okay, use this one for continuously compounded. That's when you use this one. This one you use whenever they say something like this. It's calculated annually, uh, quarterly, uh, monthly, yearly, uh, daily. Okay, these are ways that you know that you're using this formula and this one down here if they say continuously compounded you're using this formula and if you have any other further questions or concerns uh, please let me know